Hi everybody. Hey, today I have a project for you that is really aimed at elementary age and preschool age, so even younger elementary age. Um, it would be a great one for the whole family to, to do together. The younger kids are going to need a little help, but it's aimed at them because it's not going to require a ton of skill level. So I will also tell you this is a project that can be done over the course of a couple of days. Um, it doesn't have to be done in one setting. And so there are several parts to it, um, and I walk you through the whole thing, um, but it's going to involve making our own paper, not literally the paper, but designing a paper, um, cutting it out, and then making it into Easter wreaths. So you can kind of see mine here. And then also I have an extra bonus project that you can do with some of the leftover paper that you have. So watch the video all the way to the end, consider breaking it up into a couple different parts and enjoy. And as always, please post your pictures. I love to see them to Artwork by Julia Kulish on Facebook. Thanks guys. Okay, for this project, we're gonna start off with um, the following material. So you'll need some kind of a palette, a paper plate to use as a palette. And then I lined it with um, several different colors of acrylic paint. And so um, I have a lot of people ask me, like, do I need to use some kind of fancy acrylic? And the answer is absolutely not. These little craft acrylics um, work wonderfully and they come in different, um, different brands and they're all reasonably cheap. So chances are you probably have something like this at home, but you will need an acrylic. You could get away with a watercolor if you have that also. So I chose just several colors that are kind of in a pastel kind of um, springtime colors. I had a little, these two are a little bit old ones, so they're kind of running together, but that's okay, they'll work. And so then I'll, I'll, need, I'll need a palette of paint. Then I also need an additional paper plate. And it doesn't have to be any particular kind, but if it has a little bit of a lip where it kind of folds up a little bit, that works really great. Then you'll need some scissors. You'll need water and uh, some kind of a paintbrush or Q-tip. And then you're gonna need some paper. And I just took some stiffer paper, a little bit thicker the better, so um, white construction paper would work for this. Um, certainly copier paper would work for it, printing paper, but you're just gonna have to let it, it's gonna get very wet, so you're gonna have to let it sit and dry for a long time. But notice I cut the, basically I cut each piece of paper into fourths so that I have several little different rectangles or squares of my colors, or my paper, excuse me. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paintbrush, any old paintbrush or Q-tip will do, and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose some colors from my palette, and I'm really roughly gonna just like brush it on. I'm not even brushing it on all of them, I don't need every color on every single one, but I'm gonna wash off my paintbrush, quickly dry it again with on the paper towel, make some other little marks. Sometimes I can overlap into what I've already done. There is not really a right or a wrong on this. Um, your kids can also use their fingers. That's not a problem too. That would be really fun actually. So really what our goal here is, we're just gonna make, oops, I dripped some, that's okay. I kinda like that. We might do some more of that. Maybe I'll get some, if you add a little water, you can get some little fun drips and that would be fun. Just hit your finger like this. I might wait till the end to do that, but let's definitely do that. That's fun. Okay. Sometimes you just fall into a little accidents there that end up looking really fun. Okay. So my goal is to get a very abstract, um, light colored pastel feeling. And I'm going to do more than four of these. I would probably say you want to do, you know, probably, um, 12 to 16 of them. So that's why we cut it small. If you have a color that gets a little dark, grab a little white if you have it and just kind of go over it a little bit here and there to kind of lighten that up. I kind of want more of a pastel color. It looks like I have some papers hiding under there. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna really quick color several of them or paint several of them in this very abstract feel. Get a little bit of a, some ooh, fun dark stuff on there. And I want them to go, notice that on this one right here, they're all kind of going the same direction. I definitely, do, I want some differences there. So I'm gonna get some marks in there that are a little different. That blue's kind of dark, so I might get some white over that. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. And you don't have to cover the entire paper, but you do wanna cover quite a lot of it. So, 
our goal here is to just kind of um, create some abstract paper designs and this will be, we're kind of making our own paper for the project that we'll end up making with this. So this is part one. I like that peach color, that's pretty. Looking for some little spots here that need some filler. So obviously any kids can do this. This is perfect for preschool age because it, it requires no skill level. The one thing I would probably recommend is that you don't let them over mix it. I will show you what I mean. Sometimes kids want to take a paint and they just want to keep going over and over and over. And you can see instead of these bright, bold, pretty colors, I just am going to end up turning into kind of a brown mess or kind of a green mess in this case. So don't let them do that. I usually just say lay a couple brush strokes down. We're going to throw that one away. Lay a couple brush strokes down and then just leave it. Okay. And then finally, the last thing for these, I'm going to do the whole set. I'll do it um, on time lapse. But for these, I liked that idea of the speckles. So I'm going to grab, I liked that yellow actually in there. That was fun. I have a little bit of extra water, not a ton, but a little bit of extra water in here. I'm going to hold my finger out and I'm just going to hit it and let the speckles fall where they may. If it's not working, you can grab a little extra water and hopefully that's showing up on the camera. And then you'll need to let those sit aside and dry. Okay. And if they curl up like these are doing, then when you're all done, you might need to just run, um, like put a thin towel over it, something and run an iron over it to flatten it out. Cause you will need flat pieces. So I'm going to speed up the camera, show you the whole process of getting them all ready. And then I'll show you the next step. So you can see I've got a whole bunch of them now and they're all different patterns. There's my original ones which are all very similar and then I did a kind of a second batch that just has a hodgepodge with a lot more white space so that it provides a nice variety and that's what you want. So this is about how many you need. I don't know maybe I have 12 to 15 here. Okay. So what I've done now is I've taken just a normal paper plate um, preferably not a styrofoam one, but if you only have styrofoam, that's fine. And I just cut out the center of it and we're going to make an Easter wreath with this. And you can go ahead and punch a hole in the top if you would like. You can wait to do it at the end. It doesn't matter. And if you have any ribbon, you can, you'll be able to tie it at the top that way to hang it. So with the center piece, I took that and I'm going to actually use that because I cut out, or excuse me, I drew in the shape of an egg. And I did it in pencil, and yes, it took me a while. <laughs> it, did, it didn't look good on the first try, so don't, don't fret if it doesn't look great. You can, that's why you do it in pencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out, and this is gonna become a stencil for me. So my goal is to take all of the little pieces of paper, once they've dried, that we put the cool um, abstract patterns on, and we're just gonna take it, let me clear space out here, if I can find one. <laughs> a lot of these are still drying. Um, we're gonna just take it, and we're gonna use our stencil to draw on a design on our egg. So I can probably get two eggs for each one of these little pieces of paper. So I'm just gonna go around my stencil draw two of those. And then I will go ahead and cut them out. So this is the part that definitely parents or older siblings are going to have to help the kiddos do. If they are younger elementary, they probably could join in. It can be kind of a family activity to cut all of these out. And then I will speed up the camera and show you what we're going to do with them. I love though as you cut these little eggs out, that abstract design takes on a whole different form and you get this really cool abstract, sometimes speckly um, design on the egg itself that we're gonna use.
Okay, y'all, final step. And just wanted to point out, this doesn't have to be a project that is done in just one sitting. Try maybe breaking this up over a day or two day period. That would give your eggs plenty of time to dry or your paper before you cut out the eggs. And that way you're not so overwhelmed. You know, I know I've started projects with um, young ones before and you just get in a little <laughs> over your head and you're overwhelmed. And that's by no means the point of this. We want this to be a fun experience for everybody. So I do suggest maybe making it a two day project. And if that's the case, let's pretend we fast forwarded to day two. We have our cut out paper plate here. We have lots and lots of eggs. Some of them are completely full of design and some of them have white space and that's kind of an important point. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna take and glue these onto our little wreath here. And I am actually using, instead of um, just, I'm using regular Elmer's glue, but I'm using it with a Q-tip in this way because to be honest with you all, I have like a five gallon jug of Elmer's glue and so that's going to be hard to pour out but you can just use a regular bottle of glue. So I'm going to get quite a lot of glue on here and this is the fun part for kids because they like glue and I'm just going to glue it up here with it sticking off the edge just a little bit and then this one has a lot of pattern so now I'm going to choose one if, I, if at all possible that doesn't have much pattern. And it's such a fun thing because the kids basically made this paper, I mean, obviously not the entire paper. Oops, I have one behind it. Oh, oh surprise. <laughs> okay, that has a lot of white space too, so that's okay. So I'm gonna overlap that just a little bit. Again, let it hang over. Now we'll try to get one with a little more bold color or a little bit more pattern. Lots of glue. I guess I don't need to be putting it on the top. I just need to be putting it on the bottom. I'm like a kid, I just like the glue. <laughs> and overlap again, and you can decide how much you wanna overlap these. You can overlap them a lot, you can overlap them a little, it's totally up to you. But I'm gonna to continue to glue these on here, and I will show you what it looks like when we're done. So there you have it you guys and of course you can like I said put a little three-hole punch in here use it uh, hang a ribbon from there and hang it from your front door or in your kitchen or living room or wherever you would like to um, it just makes a fun little wreath and there's something about having made the patterns on the eggs paper ourselves that just makes it a little more special so if you are like me you might have a lot of eggs left may I make a suggestion for something you could do with it on another day for another project you can take your eggs that you've already made and just have the kids simply glue some on the front of a piece of paper that's just folded in two, write Happy Easter on it, let them add some little dots to the top and write a really nice note on the inside to maybe grandma or grandpa or a relative that is far away that of course we can't see during this time. And as a grandma, I know it would mean a ton to me to receive something like that from um, my grandkids because I miss them so much. So I encourage you to use the extra eggs that you have and get creative. Maybe send out a few handmade cards. It'll be just a very special thing for whoever receives them. So I wish you the best, you guys. Again, of course, um, send me pictures. I would love to see them. You can post them right to my Facebook page, which is Artwork by Julia Coolish. There is usually a post for this particular video. You can put them in the comments or post it right to the, to the page itself. So thanks, you guys, and have a great day.